And this tractor was in a field, stuck, locked up, and not working, and we're bringing it back to life. This is so cool. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. It's a beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains in North Carolina, and we're gonna get back on Earl the Tractor. So a lot of folks have been asking about Earl and asking about this unfinished project. Well, it's been in the garage all winter long, and we've got the axle off right here, and we'll talk to you a little bit more about the problems and about where he came from. If this is your first time to the channel, pound the like button. We're gonna have some fun today here on the farm. All right? All right, first things first, guys. If this is your first time in the Stony Ridge Farm, welcome to the farm. Let me step over here. I've got wires and cables everywhere. So this is Earl the tractor. Earl is a circa 1958, 59 model 65 Massey Ferguson tractor. It's hard to see it right now in this light. I've got the hood up right now. We've got the battery charger on. It has just a slow draw on the battery so it won't stay fully charged up. Earl needs love. So if you're, you can see the, the exhaust right there. Earl needs a little bit of love. So if you're unfamiliar with this tractor, we pulled this out of the bushes last summer and we thought we had a brake issue. Well, it turns out it was not a brake issue. It was this wheel bearing right here. So the wheel bearing disintegrated, fell apart, and busted everything all to pieces. So today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of intricate detail with the planetary on this, and we're also gonna be trying to get the wheel bearing assembly put back together. Hopefully we can do this. We've got a press. We should have all the tools that we'll need to accomplish this job. However, Earl's a big boy. Earl's heavy. Earl is greasy. So this will be the last time you'll see me looking clean in this video. It's going to be fun. Let me get my slide hammer set out. And the goal is to pull the axle out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the axle and we're going to remove this planetary gear and you'll see what planetary gears are all about. We're also going to have to rebuild this part of the planetary which is right in here. And I'll show you all the busted gears once we get them out. There's a whole lot going on today, man. Fingers crossed we drive this. Everybody cross your fingers right now. Fingers crossed we drive Earl out of the shop today and make some space to start working on the Willis Jeep. And we've got a few other tractor projects and truck projects going on right now too. Let's get busy. All right, let's define the problem really quickly. All this is parts. All these are parts for Earl including a new wheel bearing. What happened, what had happened was <laughs> Earl's bearings let go. And what happened, this bearing failed and all these little rollers right here, which are beautiful and nice and clean, busted into pieces inside the planetary gear of the tractor. I'll show you the planetary gear real quick so you'll understand. So this is the axle and this is the outer ring for the planetary gear. And guys, I'm no, full-time mechanic, so please forgive me if my terminology is a little bit incorrect. So this axle should slide right out. That's the goal first to get. First, this ring needs to come off. We're gonna tap it with the dead blow hammer. We're gonna try to slide it off and we're gonna put a new gasket on both sides of this little ring with gears in it. Then we're gonna slide our axle out and we've gotta put a new housing, new seals and everything in here. I've never done this before. So it should be fun. <laughs> Let's show you the planetary gear where this thing right here chipped and chiseled away. And there's a little chip in the gear right here, but we're not really worried about that. This is an old tractor and it's not gonna be pulling real heavy duty here on the farm. This is our planetary gear set. And I've had it sitting in the shop here disassembled for quite some time. This is a bearing, that bearing is awesome. These are the gears that need to be replaced. Let's get you down here and we'll show you what's up with these gears. And once we get them removed, we'll really be able to show you. But we've got some specialty tools that we'll have to use here. We gotta take all this apart, clean it up, and put it all back together. This is the planetary gear that's messed up right there. So you see how many chips and a mess we've got right here. So we've got new gears to replace that guy. And then we'll rotate the planetary around. And this guy took a bit of a hit too. Not quite as bad of a hit, but it still took a pretty big hit. So these two gears are the gears that have to be replaced. 
everything else runs pretty smooth without really a whole lot of play but we've got to make sure everything's right so as we start pulling this apart we'll set pieces and parts to the side this may end up being a two-day job but it's going to be a one video job i hope uh, we also have a cork gasket in here that we'll have to replace i can see it now it's kind of flaking apart right here and there are pieces of gear all down inside here right there's one of them little pieces of gears and pieces of bearing on the top of here this thing has been assembled before up on the very top is a mark and that mark goes all the way across to the planetary which is in the bucket over here and you want to make sure if you're taking it apart for the first time that you put a mark here so that everything lines up perfectly okay all your bolt holes everything's already been taken apart the wheels off this thing all this stuff is really heavy that whole planetary gear setup weighs about 60 to 70 pounds now what we're trying to do is separate this ring from this hub right here or axle uh, housing assembly right here so we're gonna give it a little tap we're gonna use a dead blow hammer but we're gonna try something a little different a little rubber hammer action there we go now we paid a thousand bucks for this tractor so far we've got about fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars into it when we get done with all this somebody could really take this and make a nice tractor to restore but we're most likely going to end up selling it and we'll probably sell it for around four thousand bucks so we're going to turn a little bit of profit on this that's just what we do i enjoy that kind of stuff bring something in that's a piece of junk have some fun shoot some videos on it and make it run and give it a new life again pretty cool this was sitting in a field for probably two years before i negotiated a deal with it so that's it. And the guy wouldn't take less than a thousand bucks. There we go. I really don't have to pull this <laughs> off. I didn't want to drop it, but I really don't have to pull it off except for the fact that I've got to clean all these gears really good. So it's all about cleaning uh, up in here. I'll set this guy over here and I can just smell old burnt grease. And you can see down in here, these are the parts. I wish I had my yellow gloves on. These are the parts that are all caught up in here and making it, everything a total disaster. So I'm going to clean this up and then we'll try and slide the axle housing out. I'm just going to take an old beater screwdriver and just start raking out some of the nasty in here. Yeah. Old gasket right there, old cork gasket. Just nasty. Nasty. Good challenge. Guys, I can't complain about that cleanup job. It looks super duper awesome. However, we've got some issues going on right here. So this is where that bearing fell apart and got chewed up and we've got a little bit that we're going to have to sand or grind off right here but everything else seemed to clean up pretty good next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this axle and you can see it's kind of flopping around in there just a little bit that's the bearing that went bad right there so we're going to get on this if it doesn't slide out with just my hands then i'm going to get the slide hammer we just picked up this slide hammer it's off of amazon pretty unique pretty cool little but that's a slide hammer right there pretty inexpensive I'll post a link down in the video description I'd love to just be able to lift this and pull it right out I just don't think it's gonna happen I think there's probably a ring in there that's holding it in place let me know guys tractor mechanics what holds the axle in I'm gonna wrap my rag around first see if I can just slip it out my resources tell me this axle should just slide right out, but it's not. <laughs> Glove down. I'm wearing gloves because there are little metal shards in here and I don't want little metal shards in these little hands. So. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. <laughs> awesome, dude, awesome. Oh, there's some crispy, crunchy critters in that axle there we go awesome 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 got her out so what's left of our bearings are all up in here 
Oh, there's some nasty stuff in there. A rubber seal. Yeah, lots of nasty in there. This is what we've got to get out. That's the bearing, uh, I believe you call it the bearing race. That's what the bearing rides on. We have to replace that, we have to reinstall that. And what happened is water got in to this uh, axle assembly via the weep hole at the very top. It's on the back side and we're replacing the weep hole. It's right here, okay? So water got in and water damaged it. I've got to fix this up a little bit and I got to pull this out. This is another attachment that goes on the slide hammer. It's got a little lip on it right here. So we're just going to take that lip, lay it right over the bearing and give her a little slide. And out comes the bearing. Get out. Pop it out. So far so good. Just be gentle, be patient. And there she is. Cool. So this is the axle assembly right here, and this is part of the old bearing. This is the new bearing. So we need to make note that the fat end goes toward this gear right here, okay? So the next thing we need to do is get this off, and we need to press on or somehow fit this bearing on. I do have a press over here, but I don't know that my press will hold this entire axle. This thing weighs probably eh, 45, 50 pounds, something like that. So this bearing race right here, a piece of a bearing that's left, is pressed onto the axle and I could not get it off without a little finagling. So what I did was I took my die grinder and I cut a notch right here and I cut another notch right here on the other side and I think if I hit it just right, it should come right off, snap in, in one of these places that I uh, just uh, notched out. Yep. And I've been banging on it already, so don't let me cheat here. But if you look, you can see it's already snapped right there. So it should come right on off now. A little, little tappy tap. There we go. Well, maybe. Awesome. So that got it off. Now, the other bearing it will have to be pressed upon this axle. So we'll clean this up good and we'll press that bearing on in place. That's it, let's go over to the press. Now, this isn't the fanciest press in the world, but it'll get you by. That's what it's all about. There'll also be a coupon code in the video description below for Titan Shop Equipment. Awesome. our bearing it looks good it's seated evenly all the way around and now we'll slide it up and out there we go look at that it's a thing of beauty right there this is the planetary gear setup right here okay so what happens is this ring this large ring that we took off the first thing we took off rides right along these gears i've got that all cleaned up i've been over with the super clean and the parts cleaner getting everything cleaned up big shout out to super clean they're a friend of the channel they're not a sponsor of the channel they're just good friends so um, what we're going to do here there are several snap rings this weighs about 80 pounds there's a snap ring around here and here and here. So my brain tells me to pull the center one first and I can pull this planetary piece off. Then I'll pull the snap rings here. I'll slide these pins out and I'll replace these gears with some brand new shiny gears. This is a super handy set of Vice Grip brand snap ring pliers. You squeeze them and they open. See how that works? Unlike cheaper snap ring pliers like that. That's just garbage compared to this right here. All the tools I use in here, I will post a link to. So here we go. Put this guy off a little and I'm just gonna start disassembling. So we take our snap ring pliers, 
put them right in here open that first big snap ring we may have to change uh, snap ring plier so check this out it has replaceable heads so you can put different heads on it the way it works is there's a little detent right here you push that down like so remove this pin like so and then you can replace the head on your snap ring tool pretty awesome that's really cool there we go. snap ring number one snap ring two go just like that okay now I'm assuming this bearing will lift off but you know what assuming will do for you there we go very gentle lift that out see those little bearings they will fall out all over everywhere now this is our bearing cup it's already in place and I'm just tapping it in lightly with a rubber hammer, a dead blow hammer, all the way in there. And then our axle assembly will be done, but our planetary assembly will not be done. I'm going to have to take that to my tractor guy and have him take it apart. And I'm missing one snap ring. So one snap ring is going to hold us back from getting Earl running today. <laughs> Oh man, so I'm going to get through tapping all this stuff in. We'll slide the axle back into place and tomorrow, because it's getting dark on me now, we're going to take the uh, planetary assembly and pull it over to a machine shop that can actually press it all the way apart. My press won't work for getting it apart. Dang it. <laughs> axle is in, the bearings in, the seal is in. Now I've got a cork gasket. The next thing I'm going to do is line up that notch that's right here. That's with the notch right here where this thing's been disassembled before. And slip this little guy on. So we'll see you guys when we get back from the machine shop. Fast forward five days later and the beard is gone. So this is my annual <laughs> shave basically. I kind of shave once a year. So here is the planetary setup, and I had to take it over to the tractor repair shop. So this portion that rotates uh, is separate from this portion right here. So we've got a new bearing and a new oil seal right here. We had to press this bearing off, this needle bearing off the top, and that's a cone-shaped needle bearing. Oh, let me get you a little closer. So that's it. This thing weighs close to ooh, 80 pounds or so. It's going to be a challenge to get it back on. I've got some Permatex right here uh, that we're going to be using. And it's Permatex for uh, making gaskets for differentials and transfer cases. So that's what we'll be using. We probably don't even need to use that, but I'm going to put a little bit on the bare metal surfaces just to prevent any type of leak. And also, we have some cork gaskets. So there'll be two cork gaskets put in place, and I'm going to put a little bit of this Permatex on the cork gasket to hold it in place while I slide that big heavy planetary up on the axle. I've replaced the bearing inside the axle, I've replaced the axle seal, and I've replaced the uh, cup that holds the bearing in place. So pretty cool. What we're going to do today is wrap it up. <laughs> I can't wait. So I'll put you on a little bit of a uh, time lapse here and we'll put the wheels on the uh, tractor too. Just so you guys know, we have a new set of tires from Continental Tires. Continental Ag uh, reached out to us and set us up with a set of tires. So that was super cool. They've been following the channel and I had no idea Continental Tires offered Ag tires, but they saw somehow the Continental tires that I put on our Honda Element and reached out to us. So awesome. This is a Continental Tractor 85. There'll be a link down in the video description for you. It's a 380. 85 r28 and that is heavy so i took them up to my local tire shop and i had them mounted up and loaded up so they're loaded tire i cannot pick it up so i have to go get the john deere and raise that tire up and set it over here bolt it up and we're gonna drive earl out of the garage today cool i'm super excited man taking a tractor that would have probably otherwise just been scrapped and bringing it back to life I don't know guys post comments down there tell me what you think i ought to do should we do a 
a full-on restoration or use it like it is and enjoy it, what should we do? Let's get busy. There we go, a little cut right there. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it all the way around here. Then we've got the ring gear, which is right here. That goes in place and then the planetary goes in place right there. All this stuff really cleaned up well. You can see what a disaster. And the entire problem here was caused by one little piece. And we've got two of these. This is the breather that goes in the top of the axle right here. And that breather, the cap had come off of it. So we've got two new breathers. This is the entire reason that this bearing failed. We put a new breather on the other side and we're gonna put a new breather right here. And then we're gonna fill it up with oil and rock and roll. Old breather out. This is the new breather and you can see it has a little cap on the top of it where the old breather has nothing. So we'll screw this guy on. That cap is a little loose so it makes it a bit of a pain in the butt to get started. Turn that guy in place. We'll take a 7 16 wrench and tighten it up. There we go. Take my finger clean up this little bit of a mess and then I'm going to put a little bit of gasket sealer around here you slide two bolts right into the top here maybe even right there and then I'll lift the planetary up stick it on there on these two bolts using them as hangers and then I'll come in and bolt it up appropriately. Oh baby! Let that bearing in the center line up. Use my knee. <laughs> Lift this guy up on here. There we go. Come on buddy. One bolt. This is a job man. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Pretty proud of that. Now there's 12 bolts that go through and I looked at the other side it looks like the bolts come in from this side and the nuts and lock washers uh, go right here so that only really makes sense. So we'll go ahead and start reinstalling this thing and squeezing it back together. You notice a little bit of play in this axle as it squishes together the play should go away. I hope. <laughs> Got a little bit of excess uh, permatex right here. I'm just going to kind of wipe it over the outside. Should get a nice seal. And we're going to fill this full of oil. There is a drain plug right around over here on this side. I've already got it pre loosened and I cleaned it up a little bit. Probably should have invested in one of these. Uh, a little copper washer to go on there, replacement copper washer, but we still should be just fine. Uh, I'm going to use 8090 gear oil in this and I've got a pretty cool tool to show you. All right, here's the cool tool I wanted to show you. This is a McNaught C16 oil transfer gun. We've got a lot of McNaught stuff. This is high quality good stuff made in Australia. Um, basically, I'm going to dip this down into my oil container which is right here and I've got it filled up with 8090 and draw in the oil and then I've got one of these for dirty oil for emptying out diffs. Uh, we'll be using this on the uh, big dump truck pretty soon. I'm going to pull that guy up here. Uh, we call him Mater and we'll be drawing out the old oil with the old oil gun and we'll be putting in new gear oil with the new gear oil gun if there's no drain plug. So sometimes diffs can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Sometimes you gotta pull the whole cover. Sometimes you can just suck it out just like this. So this will work great for uh, our brush hogs, the gearboxes in our brush hogs. We can draw out the old oil and put new oil in. I'll show you how it works. I'm squishing all the old air and oil out and then I'm gonna draw in new oil, just like so. It's a little chilly out here. And this will probably hold somewhere close to, I don't know, it might even say it, 500 milliliters, so close to a quart. No, close to a half a quart. <laughs> I think that's a half a quart. I don't know. One of you Canadians let me know. <laughs> 
So we'll fill our planetary with oil until it comes running out the other side. So I'm just pressing that gun just like so. And we're probably going to make a mess in the floor. That's just what I like to do. And we'll put our cap back on here. This is copper anti-seize lubricant. I'm going to post links to every tool and every product I use here on the channel, but that's the copper anti-seize lube. And I'm just going to put a dab on each stud here. And that way I don't have to fight these studs. And we're going to do it on both sides. That way if I ever have to pull uh, these wheels again, we won't have to fight it. Cool? Always thinking about the next guy. That's the most important part of being a, a mechanic on anything. Think about the next guy that's going to have to handle this machine. Think about longevity. Think about all that. That's why we put some Permatex on here. That's why we're putting anti-seize lube on here. And that's why we're going to go get the tractor and lift those big heavy wheels up and drive Earl out. <laughs> Earl doesn't have any wheels on him, so I feel pretty comfortable firing him up. We're going to put the tractor in neutral. I've had the battery on charge. I've got a brand new battery in here. I've got to buy a mount to make this battery a little more stable. It's just kind of flopping loose in here, but Again, remember when we got Earl, Earl was not running. We rebuilt the carburetor and adjusted it and got it right. So hopefully this will fire Mr. Earl right up. It's a gas tractor. I believe this is a 1958 or 57 uh, Massey Ferguson 65. So here we go. Contact. <laughs> $1,000 tractor, man. Kicks butt. Let's go get my John Deere and we're going to lift up these big old heavy tires. These tires probably weigh about uh, four or 500 pounds a piece and we'll start mounting them up to the tractor and let Earl go for his first ride in about four years. This tractor was in a field, stuck, locked up and not working and we're bringing it back to life. This is so cool. Here's what we got. We've got two of these uh, heavy duty straps that we're going to put on these tires. Uh, if I had an overhead crane or something, <laughs> that would be super duper handy. But we're going to take the pallet forks, drive up underneath this tire, kind of knock it over, and then we're going to take these two straps and set it upright and roll it in the garage. Now, these are directional tires, so we got to make sure we put them on the correct side, or <laughs> we'll be sitting here scratching our head again. So let's grab uh, the John Deere. We're going to bring it on down and knock this tire off over the side, set it up, and then we'll get the lower tire, the one that's on the bottom, and we'll have to lift it up and roll it in. Let's talk about tires, tractor tires a little bit. So Typically a tractor comes with a bias tire, okay? A bias tire is a non-highway type tire. A bias tire will wear differently than a radial tire. So let me show you. So you can see this tire right here is wearing rounded like that. A bias tire will wear rounded. It balloons out more than a radial tire. So this is a radial tire and it will wear and compress the soil more evenly. In other words, more tread will be in touch with the ground. That's why we went with the Continental Tire. Cool. Little lesson. Oh, tell me I can set it up. Oh, good. Man, that thing's heavy. You're gonna hear the baby chicks chirping a little bit. Uh, we picked up a hundred new baby chicks yesterday. Yeah. 
Get him. Get him, buddy. Woohoo! Nice. Ha <laughs> ha. We are mere seconds away from driving Earl. All right, man. So after living in the garage for six months, taking up Popcorn the Willis Jeep's spot so we can't work on the Jeep, we got Earl ready to rock and roll. She's going to be a good looking tractor. I've got a new seat to put on Earl and man, I like it just the way it is. I think it's got some character, guys. Let me know. Should I restore it? Should I leave it the way it is? Should I enjoy it until I'm tired of it? And, sell it and buy something else and have some more fun here on the farm guys thanks a lot please pound that like button i've got a little more work to do to earl i changed the filter out in the power steering and we've got to do an oil change so stay tuned for a future video we're going to see how gross the oil is in that machine thanks a lot guys we'll see you next time on the stony ridge farm i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you've enjoyed this series on earl and it's not over see you next time all right Woo! we'll come on down this <laughs> we can drop that 17 more times way over here and we've got a bad bearing in this wheel right here in this axle gear, gear. I'm gonna draw up some more gear oil it's a rather attractive noise <laughs> hopefully we can get this bearing replaced and gear Earl all back together a few gears replaced on Earl, and we'll give you the backstory if this is your first time to the channel. We're just going to have a little bit of... I may never get that back up. <laughs>